morning. It's Monday, November 16th, 2020. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, Doing Good, and our scripture is Romans chapter 2, where Paul writes, There will be trouble and calamity for everyone who keeps on doing what is evil, for the Jew first and also for the Gentile. But there will be glory and honor and peace from God for all who do good, for the Jew first and also for the Gentile, for God does not show favoritism. There's a God-ordained balance to everything under the sun. From the first rays of creation, God chose to have the results of his work involved in spreading good and dispelling evil. This is characteristic of God's nature. He is good. Adam and Eve quickly disproved that we are capable of sustaining personal goodness. Jesus chided the man who came to him and called him good rabbi. He informed the man that only God is good. Paul the apostle said the same in no uncertain terms that we are all sinners and that included himself. Romans chapter 7 verse 18. And I know that nothing good lives in me that is, in my sinful nature. I want to do what is right, but I can't. Fast forward a couple of millennia and you have our day, truth forever on the scaffold, wrong forever on the throne. We're still proving Jesus' point that humanity is incapable of sustaining goodness. Yet in today's reading, Paul asserts that there will be glory, honor, and peace for all who do good. So what gives Paul? Is there a possibility to enter that category of those who are blessed for doing good? Or are we consigned to failure in our epic attempts to overcome our no-good selves with doing good? The answer is a simple answer to those with ears to hear, yes and no. Well, thanks, that clears it up. Seriously, though, the answer is yes. If all the so-called good we do is what we can do, we're doomed to fail in our own strength. On the other hand, that reward of glory, honor, and peace is available to those whose lives are surrendered to Christ, being led or empowered by the Spirit of God, not just a personal advancement through works. In Acts chapter 8, Simon, a man who gained fame and wealth by using witchcraft, saw the apostles laying hands on people so they would receive the Holy Ghost. Simon saw the advantage of that power, and he offered the apostles money to have that gift of laying on hands. Peter saw through this veiled offer to do good and told Simon he and his money would be destroyed for such evil. In this, we see the contrast of Peter doing good works for the sake of God's will, and Simon barging in with a plan to do powerful stuff to boost his popularity ratings. An apostle was led and empowered by the Spirit of God, the other carrying on the tradition of evil with a false face of good to float a lie. And the beat goes on in politics, business, daily life, and even the church. It's no wonder Scripture cautions us to pray without ceasing, Our hearts are so prone to wander from God and into evil. As the hymn has it, O to grace, how great a debtor, daily I'm constrained to be. Let thy goodness, like a fetter, bind my wandering heart to thee. Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart, O take and seal it, seal it for thy courts above. This is the kind of transparent, honest prayer which surrenders our hearts and lives to the keeping of God and invites the Spirit of God to do the good works of God's kingdom through us. It is the Spirit who empowers any genuine goodness. For you today, whatever good you do today will never get off the ground unless your knees hit that ground first. You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.